Now that we have briefly examined the Creo parametric interface, it's time to get down to business and start creating our first part. We will begin by constructing a simple part shown here. We'll start this process by sketching a two-dimensional profile on a datum plane and then extruding this profile in a perpendicular direction. After starting the program, we'll begin by closing both the navigator and browser panes. Now we'll click on the Create a New Model icon. And then make sure that the radio buttons are set to Part and Solid. And then key in the name Block. Now we'll uncheck the option to use the default template. And then click the OK button. In response to the New File Options window, we'll click on the Empty option and then select the OK option. We'll now create a set of reference planes by clicking on the Plane icon. Creo calls these datum planes. You can think of these as the three planes that exist at the origin of the three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. Next, we'll select the View tab and then use the icon shown here to turn on the display of the datum plane tags. The datum planes are now shown at their default orientation. At this orientation, the positive side of each datum plane is visible. Creo visually indicates the positive side of a datum plane with the color brown. However, the DTM3 datum plane is shown in green because it was the last feature created and is therefore still selected. We'll now left-click the mouse away from the plane to unselect it. Datum planes are oftentimes used for orientation purposes. As we previously mentioned, the planes are now shown in brown because we are looking at their positive side. Let's now take a look at the other side of one of these datum planes. We'll do this by holding down middle mouse button while we drag the mouse to the right. As we can see, the back side of the DTM1 datum plane is shown in black. Because we will be continuously referencing datum planes in Creo, you should remember that brown and black are used to indicate the positive and negative sides of datum planes. We will now use the Named View List icon in order to restore the view to its default orientation. As your models get more complex, you will occasionally want to remove the datum planes from the display. This is done by clicking on the Plane Display icon as shown here. This does not delete the datum planes but only removes them from the current display. By clicking on the Plane Display icon again, the datum planes will be returned to the display. We are now ready to construct the first solid feature of our part by sketching its profile on the DTM3 datum plane and then extruding it the desired depth. In order to begin this process, we'll first select the Model tab and then click on the Sketch icon. Notice in the new window that has just opened, we need to select both a sketching plane and a reference plane. Since the box under the sketch plane area is highlighted, we'll select it now by clicking on the edge of the DTM3 plane. Notice that Creo has automatically selected the reference plane to be the DTM1 plane and its orientation to be toward the right side of the screen. This means that during the sketching of our profile, the view will be reoriented so that the imaginary normal vector emanating from the positive side of the DTM1 reference plane will be pointing toward the right side of the screen. Also, the yellow arrow that is attached to the DTM3 sketching plane indicates the direction in which we will be viewing the sketch plane. Since these indicated planes and directions appear to be correct, we'll now click on the Sketch button in order to activate Sketcher. We'll now click the right mouse button and select the References option. 
the window that has just opened list the geometry that our sketch will be referenced from. In our case, this is the DTM1 and DTM2 datum planes that are displayed as the two cyan-colored dashed lines on our sketch plane. As we can see in the reference status area of this new window, these two references completely define the placement of the sketch we are about to create. We'll therefore close this window now. In order to rotate the display so that the sketch plane coincides with the screen, we'll now select the Sketch View icon. We'll now select the Line Chain icon in order to sketch lines that form a rectangle. A series of lines will be created as shown here by clicking the left mouse button at the end of each line. Notice that the cursor snaps to the reference lines when it gets close to them and that Creo is automatically defining horizontal and vertical constraints as we sketch the rectangle. After sketching the last line, we'll press the middle mouse button twice to stop the process of drawing lines and return the mouse to its select status. Notice that Creo has automatically dimensioned our rectangle. Since these are not the correct dimensional values, we'll now double-click on each dimension and change them to the correct value. We'll next click on the fillet icon and then click on the two lines shown here to define a fillet. And then repeat the process to define a second fillet. Next, we'll activate the selection mode and then double click on each fillet dimension and change it to the desired value. Since this completes the sketch of the profile of our feature, we'll click on the check mark icon followed by returning the display to its default orientation. With the sketched curve still highlighted, we'll now select the Extrude Tool icon. Creo has now automatically extruded our sketched profile. However, we must change the value of the depth of the extrusion to 30 units and then select the Refit icon to bring the display to the center of the screen. And now finally, we'll click on the Verify icon, followed by the checkmark icon to accept the new feature. 